maybe Barry can uh, also supplement some of their offline uh, tags uh, in, in, in their in this chat room. So um, yeah, maybe uh, this is also time for me to maybe um, to, to accept Simon. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I think I, I suddenly we, we lost Barry, but I can see he's in the chat room. But oh, okay, so sorry for Barry. So maybe uh, there's, there's some disconnection. But uh, Simon, let me try to introduce you here. So uh, Simon is uh, the, the founder of the Open Bank project. We are very uh, great to get him to uh, here to talk about the, the topic is really interesting. Talking about open banking, yin and yang in Hong Kong. In Chinese, it is yang or yang. Come, uh, uh, this is very, very interesting. I, I, I want to know more about that. So, um, Simon, can you share your screen here? Yeah, I think that's this uh, uh, application window. One second, here we go. You got that? Um, yeah, 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 it's good. So, I, I think that your voice is also loud in here. So, uh, I will pass the state to you. <laughs> okay, and you can see my video as well, right? Yeah, 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 good. Okay, I need to stay loud. Okay, cool. So am I live type thing? Yeah, good. I'll assume I am loud and clear. Uh, greetings, folks. Uh, I'm just going to set my timer. One second. Okay. Uh, greetings, everybody. So uh, uh, hello to everybody online. And um, yeah, thanks very much to API Days. Uh, so this is the actually this is the first kind of virtual conference I've been involved in. Uh, so yeah, happy to be here. Uh, now um, we're not uh, we're not in the real world, but we're virtual. So uh, uh, let's start with a little bit of let's wake up the chi a little bit, okay? Uh, that, and you you are in the right conference, so this is not a, a Tai Chi conference or anything like that, but. Uh, yeah, first, first thing what you can do is if you're at home, you can stand up a little bit, shake around, yeah? And uh, then you can, this, this is a Qi Gong move, yeah? Um, now, I know it's expert, but I've been doing it, Tai Chi, practicing Tai Chi for off and on for about 30 years, I guess. So this is a kind of uh, starting move. You, you feel your feet going into the ground. You bend your knees. You uh, make, make sure your body's straight. You, 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 you tuck uh, your bum in and you hold your hands up here like this. And this is a very good move to, uh, uh, yeah, feel, get yourself centered uh, uh, and um, yeah, uh, it, it, it's good for self-defense as well. Uh, and uh, it's kind of a starting point for, for Tai Chi and so on. And the reason that I mention it is that, you know, open banking, uh, is not necessarily an, uh, an easy thing uh, to get into, and we need all we need all the strength uh, you know we can we can find to take us through there. So we'll come back to that a, a little bit a little bit later on. But first, I'll st I'll talk a little bit about uh, open banking uh, origins, as it were. Um, so uh, on the left here, we we have a slide. Uh, it's uh, the first slide I gave uh, at an IT conference in Berlin called ITEA2. This was February 2010. You can see that the wonderful uh, early Open Bank Project logo and the the basic idea. So this was one of I think eight slides I gave about different use cases for open banking. And as you can see there, we got uh, the applications on the outside. Uh, authentication is done via uh, OAuth, uh, and we've got an API talking to the bank. So that's the basics of open banking, right? And um, we like to say that there are like yeah four or five O's in open banking. So uh, the basic idea is open APIs for every bank. Uh, they're based on open standards. They 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 produce open standards as well. Uh, 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 the technology is open source, uh, ideally, in our case, certainly. Uh, we are yeah, encouraging open data and uh, more financial transparency. And these things lead to open innovation, right? So this is the basics of, of, of open banking. And back in 2010, uh, people said, oh, that's cool, that's fun, but um, 
uh, well, the regulators won't like it, and and banks said, well, some banks said, well, why do we need that? And if you if you go back to 1995, companies are saying, uh, well, why do we need a website? Yeah, and then in 2000, uh, uh, it's like, uh, yeah, of course we've got a website. Yeah, and, and and now banks are saying, okay, yeah, we need we need APIs, and uh, yeah, and, and we're we're here to help, and obviously lots of other companies are here to help too. And why is it important uh, now? Well, customers are ever more, you know, changing how they behave. Uh, IT systems in the banks are still, you know, uh, big and move slowly. And uh, APIs like are a layer, like a slippery layer to move on top much faster. Uh, the, the banks are getting lots of competition from, uh, from outside players, uh, from, from new, new, more agile banks, from fintechs and so on and so forth. And uh, regulation, you know, is in or coming to a country near you, um, you know, different flavors of regulation uh, in different countries. And that's something we do at Tosobi. We, uh, we advise regulators actually um, and work with regulators on helping them get standards out there uh, and, and so on. We've worked around the, the, the world uh, in, on, on that topic. Um, so what is Open Bank Project? So, it's, uh, it's essentially software, uh, it's a software stack, um, it's, AP, it's middleware, it's over 350 like pre-built in code, good Scala enterprise code, non-blocking very fast, uh, uh, 350 uh, APIs, bunch of uh, uh, open source tools uh, uh, and, uh, and so on. And yeah, we've worked with over 40 banks uh, over, uh, over the last years, and we have a large developer community uh, who are yeah, eager to work with banks, who want to get their services, want to partner with the banks. Uh, and, and we kind of put the, the banks and the fintechs uh, together. OK, so now I want to go back to a um, uh, 1,000 years. Uh, now, I'm just looking up how to pronounce this this guy's name. And we, we have a developer. His name is Hong Wei. And I asked him yesterday how to pronounce this guy's name. Zhou Dun Yi. There you go. Zhou. Zhou Dun Yi. Zhou Dun Yi. There you go. He lived in the Song Dynasty. Uh, and uh, it, it is, this uh, was actually the first country in the world to issue bank notes nas uh, nationally. But uh, Zhong Dun Yi uh, was a philosopher, a cosmologist, and so on. And uh, he, he came up with this, uh, this diagram of uh, Tai Chi. Yeah, I probably can't, Tai Chi Chu, I can't pronounce that either. But basically, what it's, what it's, what it's talking about is that you have, yeah, you have stillness and you have action, and, and, and they both flow from one into the other and from the other into, you know, into the one, yeah? And this, uh, just below the red dot, this is the kind of start of everything, and then you get this kind of uh, yin and yang uh, 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 below in this uh, stripy, stripy circles. So the yeah the idea is that basically out of the great void you've got the yin and the yang and then and then then these two go together into uh, uh, this uh, tai chi which which means uh, harmony yeah and you might recognize this symbol this is a kind of early uh, yin yang symbol and then out of that you get the bagua and I think this is interesting I put this slide here because these uh, these uh, these symbols uh, the the bagua uh, symbols. Um, it's like a binary binary code, yeah. And these things mean different things. So philosophy, yeah, hand fan, sword, etc., etc. Et uh, uh, kind of interesting. And 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 now we've got the the modern Tai Chi uh, symbol is this. So you've got the yin and the yang. The the yin is like the yeah a bit the the peaceful, the, the, the yang is the active, but you have something of each other uh, in, in the other. Yeah, that's the, that's the beauty of, of, of this symbol. And now when we're talking, we're going to get more onto tech uh, in, in, in a minute. Yeah, so uh, don't, don't worry. This is not all fluffy, fluffy uh, stuff. 
Uh, but um, I gave a talk in Canada uh, last year uh, at the um, Cooperatives uh, uh, of Canada uh, conference. Uh, and I was talking about uh, open open banking there. And I said, yeah, I mean, the tech is one thing, right? But the organization, the bank uh, or, or so really has to uh, embrace uh, embrace change um, uh, in order to uh, to um, uh, to work work with partners and uh, and be more competitive and so on and so forth. And so uh, I put this uh, I called it a collaboration diamond and then uh, one of our team uh, Dylan yesterday was talking about uh, how about putting it in the yin, yin yang uh, circle because they, the, these, um, uh, yeah, because it's relevant, right? So, so we've got the yang and the yin, yeah. So the yin is the stillness, uh, the yang is the activeness, yeah. So on the left, you've got, uh, um, uh, well, let's start with the right, okay? Let's start with the right. So uh, now, if you look up yin yang on Wikipedia, you, you, you'll see that open is maybe yang. But in this in this sense, what I mean by open is that. You should, your your portal should be open. Your standards should be open from the from the get go. Your process to arrive at the standards should also uh, also be open. Yeah, and you should use open source. Uh, and you should uh, and you should use uh, and, and promote open data. And the the beauty of that is that uh, people people just come come to you. Yeah. So uh, you know we're a small small company. We started from nothing. Uh, in a, a small office in Berlin, and now we have uh, some of the, the the biggest banks or the biggest banks uh, in the world uh, a, 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 as customers, you know. And we use this principle of openness to do that, yeah, to be to be transparent uh, about everything, even our uh, own bank accounts. And um, uh, we this is this is a this is a uh, a way that. People, people come to us, yeah, and um, and and on the other side of that is to be connected, yeah. So and uh, what Paul Rowan uh, talks about is that you know you've got to you've got to treat your developers as they as they would be your 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 customer, you know, and you've got to be really you've got to be out there connecting with with customers, and your yeah, banks should treat their APIs as super super important things, yeah. Uh, your 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 financial services are going to appear and maybe even are appearing right now in in other brands. Uh, the the end customer doesn't see doesn't know uh, it, it, it's your uh, service or so, but that doesn't really matter because your the network theory of platforms basically says you want to get your your tech out there uh, uh, and um, into. Uh, into other products and services, uh, and this is all via APIs, right? So be connected. Then, um, and then back to the yin side, uh, be still, yeah. And what does that mean? I mean, you know, hands up if if you meditate or practice Tai Chi or so or whatever. Um, you know, it's like super super valuable and important to be able to sit uh, and. Uh, yeah, and uh, meditate or sit in the stand in the park with trees around you, and so on and so forth. It brings brings clarity, and I mean, uh, organization needs to be able to like do the right thing, right? Really do the right thing. I mean, leaders need to do the right thing as well, right? And meditation can like bring that to 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 some kind of uh, some kind of clarity. Yeah. Uh, allows you to empathize with other people and and so on and so forth. So yeah, there's an inter interesting uh, uh, yeah practice called Theory U, which talks about this uh, how an organization can uh, like change itself. And this this stillness uh, is really um, really important. So I'm mentioning this just because you know open banking is not all about tech. Yeah. Okay, then on the yang side, yeah, uh, be active, right? And uh, you know, so in the open banking sense, you know, be agile, get get your uh, get your APIs out there, uh, run hackathons. This is very, 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 very active. Uh, welcome edge players, right? So, 
you know, at some of the hackathons that we've, we've run over the years, we've had fantastic, uh, fantastic speakers um, who, you know, who have gone on to run, you know, literally be the CEOs of, of new banks and uh, start and have their own uh, API platform companies, you know. Um, so, so banks want to, should be active in, in engaging uh, with uh, with the edge players, right? So, not just the people that uh, you're you're comfortable with, yeah. Uh, you, you, yeah. Okay, okay. Ah, here's another another place I need uh, Hongwei's uh, pronunciation. So, this guy here. Zhang San Feng. Zhang San Feng. Right. So, so he, this guy, he's a kind of legendary dude, right? Um, uh, and and I, I watched a short film about him, or you know, like a, a yeah, a movie, a short movie about him uh, yesterday. Uh, but basically, he was uh, he's the guy said to have in, in, invented uh, Tai Chi Chuan, which, as far as I understand, is um, uh, uh, so Tai Chi means this kind of harmony and balance, and and then uh, Chuan is this the boxing, yeah, the the fist, uh, uh, and he was said to have uh, invented Tai Chi Chuan when he was watching a, a, a crane fight a snake. And he noticed how the how the snake waited just to the right moment uh, to 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 kill uh, the crane in this in this battle. Yeah. Uh, so um, yeah, there is a bunch of moves now in Tai Chi. There are 108 moves in the Yang style, which um, I practiced. Um, I'm a bit rusty on it at the moment, but uh, there are 100 and, uh, 108 st stances. Um, so one is like this, where you um, uh, this is called uh, embrace cap the tiger and return to the mountain. Yeah, so it starts off with a cross hands, and you have this, yeah, this this push, um, and uh, so that's just one of many moves in Tai Chi. Uh, so it's about balance, and it's about how you know, uh, yeah, um, yeah, how are you, how are you going to move in a in a in a fluid way? Yeah, and pushing hands is a way of practicing practicing Tai Chi. And I think this is a, there's a good analogy here with the bank and the fintech. Like, how do they get involved? And hackathons and API sandboxes are a good way of that. They they can basically they can test each other out safely. Yeah. So once you've met a uh, partner or you want to go into action, you want to go into battle, then you've got to partner with a, with, with a fintech. And this is what Open Bank Project provide, right? We provide, provide a built-in catalog. Um, everything is REST. I deliberately left this slide very, very short, yeah? Everything is REST in OBP, yeah? There's, we don't, uh, I always like, massively complain if anyone tries to write some SQL or something like that. Uh, we have over 350 APIs, uh, bank-specific APIs, right? So now the, these are just the just the three, just the just the OB, OBP ones, and we're also supporting uh, a bunch of APIs from UK Open Banking, the Berlin Group uh, APIs, and so on. Um, so there are yeah, like four kind of realms within OBP. There's the standard entities and and, and um, uh, APIs. Then we can add custom attributes to add more more data around the standard, say, accounts or transactions APIs. Then we have dynamic entities. So you can, I don't know, say you want to store information about pianos or something like that, which is not in Open Bank Project. Then you can do that and link that to other entities. And we've just recently done this for a, a large bank, uh, basically mapping their internal data model. And, uh, and and pretty successfully. And then we have dynamic endpoints. So we have in OBP we have APIs where you can create new APIs uh, using using Swagger. Um, uh, then okay, what about the standard entities? So yeah, customers, KYC, products. Uh, then there are roles and consents. Uh, all these kind of uh, open banking consents, whether it's OBP, Berlin Group, or UK UK standard. Um, 
uh, yeah, this all gets persisted to the OBP database. Uh, we have this large developer community, uh, which is uh, building uh, using these uh, APIs uh, and sandboxes. Uh, I will skip through the portal and so on. It's, but yeah, it's pretty configurable. It's been used by many, many banks. Uh, it's very secure. Uh, we like to think it's like, you know, simple, but enough, you know, to, to, get, to get the job done. I've got two minutes left. This is our API Explorer. Now, the interesting thing about this is all the APIs are live, right? So if you use one of the Open Bank Project uh, APIs to create new APIs, you refresh this page and they are there. Uh, and the same with dynamic entities. You want to create a new entity and store data about that. You refresh the page and it's it's there and working working for you. Uh, the API manager could be used to, to route traffic to different backend systems. Uh, and that's really the beauty of Open Bank Project is that it's in software and everything uh, is gonna uh, is gonna it's going to look the same from a developer's perspective, whether it's a sandbox or a backend system. Uh, access control uh, important uh, for um, uh, yeah, actually for it's been in there since 2011, but it became uh, more useful actually with the, with the whole consent uh, issue and so on. Uh, SDKs which are not via not only via Swagger. But, uh, but of course, you can create SDKs via Swagger as well. And then we 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 support uh, different uh, or yeah or authentication uh, and authorization modes. So uh, the simplest one we do is like uh, a, like direct login. This is like su for super simple environments like a hackathon or a trusted environment, right up to. Uh, 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 OAuth2 and OpenID uh, Connect, um, uh, and also uh, external uh, OpenID Connect, e.g. E through uh, Google and, uh, and so on and so forth. And yeah, we support all this uh, uh, EIDAS certificates and uh, et cetera that the, that the standards uh, require, PSD2 and so on and so forth. Um, <clears throat> Ah, so yeah, here's another thing, rate, rate limiting. So uh, in Tai Chi, you have this move, which is like repel monkey, and it goes like this. So you, you're backing off like this. Uh, and yeah, so that's that's uh, another part we have in Open Bank Project is, uh, it, it, it is rate limiting. So this is part of one of the gate, gateway uh, features. And the great thing about Open Bank Project, I mean, some people say there's advantages and disadvantages, but you, when you grab Open Bank Project, you get the, the, everything working uh, out of the box. So you just have to configure the uh, the rate limiting, and it's going to work. It's not like lots of different separate components and so on. Of course, you don't have to use all that. You can disable uh, rate limiting, etc., if you want. Um, we publish our performance uh, statistics. So we have JMeter Lotus, which are online. So you can uh, grab those and run them against your uh, Open Bank Project instance to see how it's uh, performing. Uh, with billing, uh, we, um, yeah, we use, again, we use APIs for, for, for that. So uh, um, there are, you could use Open Bank Project APIs to, uh, um, yeah, set rate limits and uh, and interface with an accounting system. Uh, so, for instance, we use one called Invoice Ninja, uh, and this uh, can be used to generate invoices uh, based on the the API metrics, like the the API usage coming out of uh, Open Bank Project. Um, something about custom attributes. Ah, this is, yeah, we're jumping around a bit here, but. Um, Say you've, you want to use an open bank project uh, API uh, for accounts or customers, but you want to have uh, a bunch of extra uh, attributes there as well, then you can use these uh, custom attributes, which are basically key, key value pairs. So you accelerate by getting the, the API there very, very quickly. Uh, and it's like many people have used that. So it's a kind of common body of information that most banks you know, would like to give about their customers, but then you can add uh, extra extra information. 
So I mentioned dynamic entities before. So this is basically, uh, uh, you've got an open bank project instance, but now you want to store something new, like, I don't know, some about the marketing campaigns that you're doing or the, I don't know, the, the, the number of COVID-19 related incidences or something like that in, in your company. So then you could create a, uh, uh, basically, a, it's like creating an object with fields. Uh, they're typed fields. They link to other fields and so on. You could link, for instance, you could link to a customer. Say you want to store something about a customer, then you'll have a proper link to, to the customer via the customer ID and so on. And dynamic endpoints, yeah, they you, you create them via an API. You need a role for that. Uh, they, they, they show up in the API uh, Explorer. And um, yeah, th then you pass them through to uh, to the back end. So here's the architecture of Open Bank Project, roughly one of the architecture diagrams. We'll share these slides uh, so that you can have a look at them. Um, we have this connector layer, which will either pass stuff direct to the database, uh, or it'll pass stuff to uh, to uh, the back end systems over Acker or Kafka or REST. Uh, we have internal APIs. There's something we call message docs, which defines the uh, the messages we send, and that includes all the security context uh, from the user. So, like uh, any tokens or usernames, uh, linked uh, linked customers, and so on and so forth. Here's a kind of spread out diagram that you can you can run multiple instances of Open Bank project uh, uh, over on on Kubernetes and so on. So you you don't have to run it as a monolith. You can run it as uh, as breakdown. And I think I'm coming to the end of my time now. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So Simon, sorry that uh, I think um, uh, that the time is uh, too, too much over. But I think you uh, uh, you can try to leave your contact in the chat room so that people may uh, try to get your slide. And then I, I do I do think that some people may want to ask you some questions. So maybe ah, you can yeah. yeah yeah. So so you try to uh, leave your contact in the chat room first, and then uh, we will ask the how to to find you offline. Yeah. Okay. So um, when when uh, when you say my contact, uh, what do you mean? Oh, okay. You, so uh, you can uh, maybe if uh, if uh, you want uh, the the people to reach you out uh, offline for some quick question, then maybe you can type maybe your email, personal email, etc. in the chat room, so that they can okay, find so you. Okay. So here's my email, uh, Simon at tosobi dot com. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm not very good at answering my email though. So. Uh, it's okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I put my company email as well, contact at Tosobi. I'm yep. Simsy Sims, Simsy Sims on Simsy. Yep. On Twitter. So Simsy. thanks, so thanks, Simon. So uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I think I will uh, need to introduce the other speaker here as well. Okay, so good. Thanks, thanks Any again. So. For anyone? Uh, yeah, I, I think I think uh, they will try to reach you out offline. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. Thank cool. you. Thanks, Simon. Thanks a lot. Okay. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Bye.